Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you for coming to watch. So I've got you guys an update on Major Hurricane Burl, okay? Burl underwent rapid intensification last night. It is currently a Category 4 Major Hurricane uh, located just a few hundred miles to the east of the Lesser Antilles. We have a lot to talk about in this video because we have some really important, to new important news to spread as Burl is looking to be a lot stronger than... Uh, what we first anticipated it to be so we're going to be going over all the details in this video all right so thank you for joining me here on this sunday afternoon we are going to go over just the latest information on barrel and where it's going to go uh based off of the information that we just got so starting out here take a look at your current satellite i mean you can see it, it looks a lot different than what it looked like last night we have a well-defined eye and eye wall uh just you know a freaking donut out there but, I mean, it's looking really sharp, and uh, it's entering, like like we said, it's entering a really favorable environment for further development. So, this thing's going to continue to strengthen. This is currently a low-end Category 4 hurricane. This is going to continue to strengthen to probably a mid- to high-end Category 4 before it hits the Lesser Antilles. But you can see it's just getting really strong and uh, back over here, you can't see them, I don't think, but the lesser uh, the lesser Antilles are up here, okay, and Trinidad and Tobago are down there. So, uh, this is really getting close to the Leeward Islands, the lesser Antilles, but, I mean, you can just see full circulation. I mean, even on satellite, you can see the outer bands. This eye wall is just crazy. So, a very uh, compact and well-defined uh, storm there, just, you know, a lot of booming convection as well. You see these, like, blacks and sometimes these splotches of white. Okay, that's just really high and cold cloud tops, so some big time thunderstorm development with this uh, storm. So we're going to move over here uh, to your cone. So this is your updated cone. This is what was what we were looking what we were looking at as of last night. This was only a weak category one hurricane. It was a border. It was a borderline cat one hurricane. And uh, it really wasn't looking too uh, too sharp uh, as of last night. And we expected this to get up to a cat two by this morning. And it did just that. It is a cat two um, as of two in the morning this morning. But you could see it took a big jump. All right, we expected the storm to get to cat two as of right now. It wasn't even supposed to be cat two yet. It was supposed to be cat two at around two o'clock. So I guess um, as of last night, we expected this storm to be a cat two hurricane at around right at, at around the time of filming this video. But look where it is now. It underwent what we call rapid intensification, where it went from a cat one to a major Category 4 hurricane in less than 24 hours. That is insane. And it's June. It's June. All right? And the only reason for this happening is because uh, there's just very limited wind shear. It's entering a v extremely uh, favorable environment for further development because not only do you have the, you know, those limited amount of wind shear, but you also do have ridiculously warm sea surface temperatures and so this thing is just eating that up and it's become just this beast of a hurricane and at this point it is a category four major hurricane with sustained winds at maxing out at around 130 miles per hour so i mean you could just see how it took that massive jump from cat one all the way to cat four in less than 24 hours which is ridiculous but we are expecting barrel to continue to intensify and you can see by tomorrow or sorry this is uh tonight we're expecting this to jump up to a 140 mile per hour storm. So this is at this point going to be a mid to high end category four. Now, you notice there's no pink areas on this cone. That could change. This has a shot at going cat five. But as of right now, it's seeming like it's running out of time to get there. And we think that it's going to sustain that's that category four status as it moves through the lesser Antilles. And so by the time we get to tomorrow morning, we wake up tomorrow morning, and this thing is going to be right on top of you guys, um, near Granada, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, or Tobago, not sure how to pronounce it, St. Vincent and the uh, Grenadines. Um, you guys, I mean, it's going to be right there. It's going to be right on your doorstep Monday morning as a 140 mile per hour storm. Uh, this has changed. You did not see a Category 4 marking on the cone. Um, if you watched my update last night, this wasn't there. But this has blown up because of just how much Barrel has intensified, which nobody expected. But uh, Barrel just, you know, it, it blew up. That's that's all I can say. But now we have hurricane warnings going out all the way from, uh, say, 
Lucia, I think Lucia, I'm not sure. Um, correct me if I mispronounce these names. I'm not going to remember every how to pronounce every single uh, island's name, but, you know, I'll try to do my best here. But from St. Lucia down towards St. Vincent and the Gren Grenadines, uh, Granada, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, Tobago, uh, you guys are all under hurricane warnings. That's in the red shade. All right, this is where we're expecting uh, hurricane force conditions, if that makes sense. But if you're in the path, I mean, you've got to expect winds that could that will be well over 100 miles per hour. I mean, the eye wall, where the uh, strongest winds are, it'll be up to 140 miles per hour, which, to be honest with you guys, I mean, your home's, your home's toast, all right? I mean, I don't mean to sound brutal, but, I mean, if you're watching here from these islands out here that are currently in the path of uh, of barrel, I mean, your home is uh, in grave danger of being destroyed. I mean, 140 miles per hour, uh, those kind of winds, just they don't play around, all right? So, I mean, this is just an extremely dangerous situation. I'm sure we uh, already have or will have evacuations in place, but, I mean, this is really, really bad for you guys, and this is just going to go right through you guys at this point. This has shifted farther south, so if you're up here near, like, the port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Granada, you guys are more at risk than people uh, up near uh, St. Lucia, Barbados, St. Vincent and the uh, Grenadines. You guys are just to the north of the cone, but remember, you're still going to get, you know, like, the uh, outer core of the storm, So, which is basically, if you can see, uh, the outer core is kind of this part of the storm, okay? And then if you're up here near Sierra... Uh, if, excuse me, if you're up here near Martinique, you're going to probably get the outer bands, which are going to give you tropical storm force conditions. These are the outer bands, these little, uh, like, octopus uh, little things here, octopus-looking things, if that makes sense. Those are what you guys are going to get. Those are going to bring some heavy rainfall, some strong winds. Uh, it could be damaging, all right? But that's going to give you tropical storm force conditions. That's why Martinique, you guys are under tropical storm warnings. And then Dominica, uh, Dominica, you guys are currently under tropical storm watches. If this shifts farther north, then you'll probably see this this hurricane warning be shifted up to Martinique, and then you'll see the tropical storm warning probably get shifted up to Dominicana or Dominica. Um, but as of right now, this is the comb. It's going to continue a after the Lesser Antilles. It's going to move into the Caribbean, and it's going to continue uh, as a Category Four hurricane with 130 mile per hour winds. So it, there will be a slight drop off between when it goes through the Lesser Antilles and then when it gets to uh, around here. So that'll be a, about a 10 mile per hour drop off, still a extremely dangerous, extremely strong category four hurricane. And it's continuing as a, it's continuing as a category three, her uh, category four hurricane by Tuesday morning. And uh, we still got maximum sustained winds at around 130 miles per hour. But a lot of people are probably wondering at what point does this finally start to weaken out? Uh, excuse me. Um, but this, as of right now, the cone, all right, this is the path of uncertainty. You can see the cone of uncertainty marked here. As of right now, the general idea is that by some point late Tuesday, this will slowly start to die down. But it's still a major hurricane uh, with 125 mile per hour winds, which is the current forecast uh, for Tuesday night. Okay, at this point, it's not affecting any areas of land. Then we get pretty far out, but you start to see more uh, locations that are currently in the cone of uncertainty. Jamaica, yes. As of right now, you guys are in the cone, and at this point, it would still be a major hurricane with 120 mile per hour sustained winds. Category 3 major hurricane by Wednesday morning. It could be in this general area. If this shifts north, you guys are in more of a danger zone uh, for the path of this storm. This is pretty aggressive from the National Hurricane Center because if you notice, I mean... This has a long way to go, and it's still going to experience some shear. But once again, it's just very limited. But I mean, that's a long way to go. We're going to measure um, how how many how long that is. So we're going to start there, and we're going to take this out to out to here. All right. This storm has to cover fourteen hundred miles, um, and it's, it's the National Hurricane Center still wants this to be at a major hurricane. Um, av after it covers over 1,400 miles. I mean, that's just crazy. So it's going to be tough to do this. This is pretty uh, pretty aggressive. I'm not saying it's overdone because we don't know if that's true. But all I'm saying that, that this is just a very aggressive forecast from the National Hurricane Center. 
But beyond Jamaica, this does weaken down to a Category 2 hurricane by Thursday morning. Now, this is very, very far out. So this is not going to be the exact forecast. I'll tell you that now. This is going to change a little bit. This is going to tweak north, tweak south. We'll just have to see. All right, but by Thursday, this could be back down to a Category 2 110-mile-per-hour storm. And then finally, still in the cone of uncertainty, but this does end up impacting the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. All right? I don't know if this is going to go into this exact area because, remember, this could still go here. It's still well over 1,500 miles away. So it could go this way. It could go that way. Maybe it could just go right through, all right? We just have to see the forecast, see where this thing's heading. But as of right now, this is what the cone of uncertainty is looking like. And all, all, all I'm going to say now is that this is going to change, all right? But that's the current path of the storm. That's the current path of barrel. Just remember, this is still going to be a major Category 4 hurricane by tomorrow morning. And it's going to be right on top of the lesser Antilles. So... Go over to the GFS. We're going to look at model guidance here just to see what the models are predicting for the path of this storm. This is the 60 run of the GFS. I'm not looking at the 12Z because the 12Z really just underdoes the strength of the storm. This is not a 981 millibar low. This is well below that at a Category 4 hurricane. Even the 60 is underdoing it. It's underwhelming the storm here. Uh, But we're going to look at it just because it shows a little bit more of a stronger scenario because, you know... Both of them are just not showing the exact strength of the storm. But anyways, by 8 a.m. this morning, this is where it is. You can notice how it's taking a little bit more of a southern approach. Now, we, we put this in a motion, and it's moving northeast. So you'd think that this is going to go right up towards, like, the Dominican Republic, eastern Cuba, Jamaica. I mean, that's that's definitely a possibility. But it starts to take a little bit of a... Uh, eastern turn. It's more, or uh, sorry, western turn. It's it's not moving like northwest. Really moving east to west, um, which would be after Wednesday. All right. So this would actually be after Tuesday. So by Tuesday night, this thing could change directions, and that would hopefully spare most of our folks out there in uh, uh in areas near the Dominican Republic, eastern Cuba. But look out, Jamaica, because this is still not completely moving west or sorry east to west this has still got a slight like uh west northwest uh track to it all right so uh we put this a little bit farther out and this is going right towards jamaica i mean this is much farther north than what the cone from the national hurricane center is showing but the gfs wants this slamming jamaica uh is a 988 millibar low which is i think very underdone compared to what we just looked at but this would be uh, good and bad in, in their own ways, all right? The good reason is that it's a lot weaker than what the cone is saying, but the bad reason is that it actually goes right through Jamaica instead of going slightly to the south of it. So, I mean, the GFS wants to take a northern approach. The National Hurricane Center wants to keep this farther south. We're just going to have to continue watching the forecast. That's all we got to do. Notice behind, uh, Invest 95L, or no, that's actually not, um, it's, I don't think it's an Invest yet, but that tropical wave that we've been watching, notice how the GFS has that developing, and it goes through the same exact area that Barrel is about to slam. So we could have potentially two hurricanes move through the same exact area, and notice how this is still pretty strong. This is a 987 millibar low. You could argue that this is a low end category two hurricane. So we could have a Cat 4 and a Category 2 hurricane impact the same exact area in less than a week. That's just bad news for you guys out there in the Lesser Antilles, but you've got to be watching this video. You've got to be paying attention, but, I mean, this is continuing to strengthen as it moves into the uh, Caribbean. This is a 980 millibar low, so this is still a very strong storm. I think at this point, yeah, drops down to a 977 millibar low, so this is a strengthening Category 2 hurricane. Uh, and notice how Barrel out here is starting to now get into that same general area as what the cone from the National Hurricane Center is forecasting. Makes it over towards the Yucatan Peninsula, uh, the Bay of Capeche. It goes north of there, but it does impact the far northeastern side of the of uh, the Yucatan Peninsula. As uh, what I do think will be future Tropical Storm or even future Hurricane Chris, as Chris makes its way over towards the same exact area as what the GFS was showing for Barrel, and then it impacts uh, it impacts Jamaica as well. 
So we could literally have a copycat of, you know, of Barrel, okay? We could have Barrel 2.0 just a little bit weaker. But, I mean, you can see it almost takes the exact same path because uh, what happened is that we got two tropical waves very close to each other, and they just were so close to each other that they got put into the same steering current, which held up for a while uh, to the point where they could take almost the exact same track, which is just unbelievable. But the GFS on the 6 wants Barrel to continue as a tropical storm or a potential hurricane. And notice how it's got its hands on the Gulf of Mexico, which has very warm waters, and it gets all the way up into Texas, uh, slamming Texas as a high tropical storm or a Category 1 hurricane. But just look how long that is. I mean, that's over two. That's that's over 2,000 miles. I mean, that's just really, really far, and it's June. So, I mean... It's just crazy, guys. I mean, this is unheard of. This is the first June Category 4 hurricane, actually, in uh, in history. But this whole area has ridiculously warm sea surface temperatures, and that's what we've been worried about this season. That's why everyone's forecasts for this, tro- this uh, hurricane season have been so crazy and just so, you know, high-end. It's all because of these waters, and that's what we're seeing with Hurricane Barrel and future Hurricane Chris. But... That's the 60 GFS. The uh, it, the GFS wants Hurricane Barrel to go into Texas and to kind of just dissipate and get caught up in a trough before uh, future Hurricane Chris uh, weakens to a what I would think is a tropical depression if this were to happen, which is really far out, 216 hours out. So this will definitely change, but it wants it to go in the Gulf Coast as well. So a lot of different scenarios are still possible, but... Man, I mean, the Lesser Antilles and the Leeward Islands, you got to be paying attention. And I, I feel bad for you, but um, it's just its just a really serious and dangerous situation that you guys are currently in. Finally, we're going to look at just what's bringing these storms uh, in, the, in that direction. So, you know, you're looking at the 500 millibar height anomalies. You see those little, these are like orange shades, these, uh, these warm colors here. This is what we call a ridge high pressure. This is going to bog the storm further south. The storms, tropical storms and hurricanes want to avoid high pressure because they're made of low pressure. Now, another thing to notice is look at all this neutral, this balanced pressure in the atmosphere of in front of the storm. This is going to eat that up and it's going to move wherever the most balanced area is. When you have, when you ever have a balanced area of pressure, um, and you have a hurricane next to it, It's I'm guaranteeing you that it's going to go right in that direction because this is what we would call a picture-perfect scenario for a hurricane. Uh, picture-perfect meaning, like, for uh, further strengthening development. Obviously, we don't want that because it's putting more people in danger. But for a hurricane, this is, what a, this is exactly what a hurricane wants. And it's going to continue moving in that exact same area. This high pressure is going to retreat farther north, which will slowly bring barrel north i think that's definitely a possibility that could put people near jamaica and cuba in much higher danger but that's the steering current and then here's future hurricane chris potentially notice that this is way off to the north so i do think that there's still potential for chris to actually go into uh into cuba and maybe even up towards the bahamas in fact the uh gfs runs from Yesterday did show a uh, future hurricane or a future tropical storm, Chris. It they did uh, the GFS did show um the, did show it going all the way up to the uh, to the Bahamas. So there's a lot of different scenarios, but you know just to you know put everything into perspective, you just you got to be aware that this situation is unfolding, especially if you're in the Caribbean, if you're in any of these islands. Please, please, please watch your local news station, but watch the weather. If you get ordered to evacuate, just do it. Just do it. You can't, you can't, I mean, it's just too dangerous to try and survive in a Category 4 hurricane that's borderline Cat 5. Almost, it's almost borderline Cat 5. It's it's going to be close. But, I mean, if you're in the Lesser Antilles, um, I'm very worried for you. I don't mean to be brutal, but it's just going to be a really dangerous situation that's going to unfold as we wake up tomorrow morning. All right, so that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for Thank you so much for coming to watch. I will see you guys next video. So just wanted to give you guys a little emergency update um, because we got some pretty 
booming uh, information here from the National Hurricane Center. But once again, please stay safe out there. Subscribe for more Tropic updates. Uh, I do also post updates just for regular weather across the United States. But anyways, thank you for going to watch, and I'll see you guys in the next video.